right, we'll call the uh, November 1st regular board meeting to order. Uh, we've got, what, John Quinn on teleconference, Flo Smith, Brad Town here. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda events? Yeah, I have a few additions. Uh, letter of intent to participate in the Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program for equipment purchase. We have the tax forgiveness for their amounts under $5 and the parking lot agreement uh, with the City of Montpelier for Darling Hill Trail discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any public comment? None here. None. We got Mr. Noy's discussion regarding snow plowing issues. Yes, Mr. Noy. Mr. Noyes. Here. It's me. Hi. Um, hi. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Mike Noyes. I live at uh, 407 Marvin Road uh, with my wife and two young daughters. Um, as you may or may not know, no, Marvin Road is a dead end road. It's down by Capital City. Mm -hmm. um, it's always been challenging for the plow to turn around at that location. Um, we have been there for um, about 13 years. My fences have been broken, my yard's been trashed, my driveway's been tore up. I've invited the town up several times so all interested parties could come to a solution that worked for everyone. Um, unfortunately, that invitation was passed on by the previous town administrator for a long time. I then approached the former road <coughs> supervisor and said, I'm willing to sacrifice some of my pasture area to make it easier for the town. And um, I suggested a certain spot, but he deferred to a different spot, and so a turnaround area was built. I, um, I moved my animals off that part of the pasture. I removed the rail fence that I had built, and the town came up with equipment and fill and made a 33 by 30 foot area for the town to be able to turn around plows in the grader. <coughs> I then rebuilt my fence in order to keep the animals in. It seemed to work, and we didn't have any problems. A new road supervisor was hired and the problem started again. First they came up and cut down part of my willow tree, which is right on the corner of the uh, turnaround area, without any knowledge that they were going to do it. They said they needed the room. Then while pushing the snow back with the grader, they snapped the farm sign that I had made. It was made with 175 year old hand hewn beams. I fixed it. The final straw, and why I'm here today is they carelessly plowed over my beehives. These beehives have been there for years with no problems. They sit over 25 feet from the center of the road. They sit behind a willow tree, approximately 15 feet away from where the plow area turnaround ends. Current town administrator said the turnaround does not work and would like to come up with a new solution and he has not contacted me in order to do this. They don't even use the area to turn around the road greater. Uh, choosing to turn around in the Baird's driveway, which is about 75 feet um, prior to the uh, to that area. <clears throat> they don't even come up to finish grading the road, um, choosing to ignore the last 100 yards or so of Marvin Road where my family lives. Um, every time it snows, I carefully use my farm tractor and I back drag the uh, turnaround area out to make it easier for the plow truck, um, as I know it's challenging and they're in a hurry. I'm simply asking for an opportunity to work together to come to a permanent solution. I thought we had already done this, but apparently it's a problem again. I can't get the willow tree parts back, but they'll grow back. I fix the fence every single time that it's broken. I never ask the town for a thing. Eddie would apologize when he broke it, but I would just fix it. But the destruction of the beehives has put my family out um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Town administrator said the select board wasn't interested interested in reimbursing me for this, but I'm here in person just asking for that. Um, the bottom line is I've always tried to do the right thing. I've come up to the town. I've asked. I've, I've offered. I've I've offered for uh, help. I've tried to come up with solutions, and I try to do the right thing. And all it's gotten me is financially, you know, hardship and and um, and the and the. The town doesn't even finish doing their job. Um, thanks for your time, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay. 
Thank you for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> so, I understand you're a little bit frustrated. Like, the, I don't know much about the whole situation, but I don't know if Vince or Tim, either one of you would like to continue on with a little bit to fill the board in. I, I, can, I can kick it off a little bit, just uh, to give a little of the perspective from the obvious side. So. Obviously, we have you know, a change in staff here, so we have a new town administrator, new foreman. We don't want any issues like that. Um, with town residents, we want to work together as much as humanly possible. Um, don't want to inconvenience anybody in any way. So um, if we can just get up to speed a little bit and get an understanding, I think that would be good. Yep. Here's, a, here's a couple of pictures if you guys are sorry my printer's absolutely horrible those are the best ones I could come up with and you said you're seeking reimbursement for the beehives do you have a dollar figure in mind for the reimbursement that you're seeking um, you know it's really honestly it's I'm looking for a solution you know the bees can't be brought back you know just to replace the bees alone is $300 not to mention all the honey in the frames I mean it's a thousand dollars but you know I just I, I want something that's going to work. I thought we figured it out, and then obviously we had some turnover. I just want to. <laughs> I just don't want any problems. Yep. So I can start off with. I agree with a fair amount of what Mr. Noise has said tonight. Uh, he did call me. Uh, I did go up. Uh, I met with him. We took a look. We took a walk around. Um, he showed me the. Uh, the, the post that was loose on, on the sign. Um, he showed me where the beehive was located, uh, over the bank from the from the turnaround as well, uh, that had been been disturbed. Um, I spoke with Tim and, and brought him up. We took a look as well uh, at the situation, and I'm going to let Tim speak for himself on this one. Um, but I, the the point that I'd like to clarify just a little bit is that one of the reasons that he's here tonight is because. The town, myself, mm -hmm. I asked him if he would like to. He always has the opportunity to appeal to the board, mm -hmm. right? Have a discussion if he degree, disagrees with any decisions or whatnot. Absolutely. Um, so that, that's part of it. So we got him on the agenda to, to come tonight for that because I told him the same thing. We need to come to a resolution. Winning, winter's getting close, and neither one of us needs to have this continue any further, right? We need to find a, a reasonable solution to solve this issue, to make it go away permanently. Because, again, uh, when I came up to visit him, in, in fairness to him, he did explain to me the, the history a bit and the number of issues that he's been having. So, again, um, we, need to, we need to come to an agreement and, re and resolve it. Uh, because, again, when I was up there in the, in the winter after he had called me, um, there's a huge pile of snow um, on the side of the uh, turnaround okay. where the willow tree was uh, and, and at the end of the driveway. It takes, uh, again, I'll let Tim speak, probably 37 to 40 feet to back one of those dump trucks around. There isn't enough room, plain and simple. <coughs> hit snow banks, we're going to hit something, right? Yep. Um, and just turning the truck around, much less where do we put all the snow from up there as well. Right. So those are some issues that, that need to be resolved. Okay. Um, what... What's your experience with that particular turnaround and road? And it's tight, it's very tight, especially when you, you know I mean, when you start getting snow towards the middle of winter, it's tight. There's, I mean, it's fences right on the side of the road. So normally, you know I mean, they pile up, they kind of feather out of it somewhat toward the end so they don't leave a pile and then try to get turned around. Yep. And then try to, once they get turned around back on the hill, they back back up, put the plow down, and try to take as much of it down the hill. But, you know what I mean, four o'clock in the morning when we're down there, nothing's plowed, it's hard to get turned around and turn around. And um, they do, you know what I mean, we do clean their turnarounds out. And last year there was a new driver down there, and never, you know, no fault of his. And I can't say that he, you know what I mean, this issue was brought up. We talked to the driver that was there. He said he didn't do some of the stuff that was brought up. So, uh, on that aspect, but uh, uh, you know, it's it's tight. It was that plow, 
once you put the plow on there, and those trucks are 36 feet long, and then you got another six to eight feet of plow hanging off the front of it, you're over 40 feet long when you're trying to turn that around, and then when you try to turn that around, you know, I mean, it sticks way out. Yeah. Uh, now there's, there's a turnaround area. Yeah, they made, you know, I mean, I'm not sure when it was put in. It was in the last five years, I believe, right? Do you yeah. have do you have your 40 plus, do you have enough room to turn around? And it's, like, what were the dimensions? 33, 33 by, by 30, and that's not including any of the road. Yeah. What's the width of the road there? They've widened the road over the 14 years. 14 feet at the best, maybe 12. That plow and wing on the truck is 16 feet from tip to tip to plow to tip of the wing. 45 to 47 feet to turn around. Yeah. And then is there any, do you keep that clear for the town too? Is that like, I don't understand, I don't know the agreement or whatever the turnaround was. In the in the winter time, it's it's always, there's nothing there. Um, we, so we, they would have a problem with the grader in the summertime. You've mentioned that in here. Obviously, the grader is bigger than the trucks. Right? Some, some. There's usually. So as far as as far as the grading goes, I was down there on Friday, and it was over half full round bales and tractors and bin size pitchers. They're in the packages. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't sure if it was in the pack. Um, what do you think? Do you think there's anything? What do you think? If any, yeah. Before before there was ever a turnaround, they always the plow turned around just fine, the grader turned around just fine. But it was just, in your we were just trying your, to make it a little in your easier. driveway though, right? right? Yeah. But it's since been paved. That's not correct. And and the reason I, will, I did not. So this is what I was. Yeah, I was let me going. finish. But to answer your question. Well, I have to I was asking a question. I, I, don't, I, don't, a question. I don't Yeah, I was told that it was paved, and that we were the town itself was asked not to use the drive because if we wrecked the driveway, we were going to pay for the pavement, <laughs> and repave right. the driveway. Right. <laughs> so that was my understanding was is we were asked not to use the driveway anymore, which in turn ended up why we have the turn. The turn. Okay. No, I have no idea where that came from. Okay. The reason that I didn't pave the driveway is so that the town could use it. The the driveway, I don't know the dimensions, but it's about half paved. Um, Tim, how, how long do you think that is from the driveway? 100 feet, maybe? <coughs> the turnaround? No, the, my driveway. Anyway, it's half. The reason I didn't pave the whole thing was so the town could use it. I only paved, paved the closest part to the to the garage. Okay. So, and that as far as snow, it's just snow from the road that's getting put in the turnaround area. It's not anything like you're not pushing. You know, I just want to make sure everybody. Yep. What I do is I I I go in with my farm tractor. I back drag it out to make it easier because obviously that plow can't do the whole thing. You know, it's too big. So I go in and I back drag it every snow, unless it's an inch or whatever, but you know, and, and try to keep it clear for the town because I appreciate the hard work they do. You know, I try to make it as easy as I possibly can for them. So it sounds like <clears throat> if we can figure out a way to try to just move forward and make sure there's plenty of room to turn around and not do. What about the sign? That there's an issue with the sign. Is that I right? fixed it? Right. Well, I know the, the sign, rain. but is it in the permitted right away? Is it a permitted sign? I'm just curious about that, just so I know. It's off the road. Uh, I just want to know if, if it was in if the If you right went 25, 24 foot seven, 24 foot eight inches, which is a three rod road, which is a, that is a class three road. I mean that post is in the. Right away, the road. Right. You know, what I mean, if you went that from the center lane, then it's 25 feet there. Right. And then, as far as I know, um, there's no permit that was ever drawn for the sign. Did you? Did you did I, I don't know if there was some sort of agreement prior to me and Vince on that. Or not, but so. do you know if you pulled the permit for the sign and had it, whether it's its location? 
No, it's just a, just a couple of posts on the ground. What what hit the post? Was it the snow or the plow itself? The snow. No, it wasn't okay. the plow. It was actually the grader when he was moving the banks back. I got you. <clears throat> so this is basically a problem with where the snow is going, not so much the equipment itself. Correct. Um, on the back side of the turnaround, what's across the road from the turnaround? My front yard. Oh, I got you. The bank. Mm -hmm. It's all like going up in there. It's all. It yeah. comes right down to the road ditch, and then it's a bank. So, so we can't really push them all the other way. Well, I was just thinking if, if it was if it, they were able to put the cross the road back across the road with the truck, and then take them go out. Right. You know, and, and again, I don't want to take the time of, of you guys. This is something that I'm sure that Tim and myself and Vince can figure out. I'm, I'm here to get the ball rolling so we can do that because okay. there has not that has not happened. Okay. Well, as, as well as to reimburse for the bees would be great. So I take it the beehives got hit by snow being pushed down over the bank. That is correct. It was not hit by the plow. It was just yes. pushing the snow. I got you. Well. Well, anything. No, but I appreciate you bringing it to our attention so that we can address it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll discuss it. We'll talk about it, figure out, probably have some conversation. Brad, do you have anything else? No, I, I was just wondering about the, I mean, to me, it's strictly a matter of, um, uh, it's, it's strictly a matter of where the snow is going. It's not so much the equipment itself. Right. Um, that's one of the troubles that always happens in a tight driveway. Right. Because it's hard to, it, it's hard for the truck to stop and leave a, a hardened pile. Mm, absolutely. You always try to get rid of that so they can. So you don't lose the room. Well, not so much you don't use the room, but if he wants to go out through there with his tractor or something or has to, he doesn't have to take and shovel out 30 feet of frozen snow. Sure, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to do, do you think um, we can figure out a solution for this winter at this point in time and if everybody's willing to work together we'll be able to and then yeah I think we'll have to do a site visit yep. walk it and talk it and come up with a solution seems reasonable you, come, you good with that yeah oh yeah and then Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you very much. All right, we have uh, digging in the right of way, Ellen Moody, Scott Hill. Yep, that is just the, the <coughs> typical right of way permit. It's a uh, future, for a future primary residence and a subdivision off of Scott Hill Road. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, uh, they're proposing it to be about 800 feet long and 20 feet wide. Ties in. Uh, they have a 48.2 acre. These are the ones yeah. that are going right before the cemetery, right on the left. Yep. yep. That's where they got. Yep. And everything isn't all the, the. There's four sites up there, right? They're already permitted. Is that my understanding? Yep. Well, they're getting there. They're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So with these, Brad, haven't we typically done? Um, it's ten percent more. What's that? Uh, what's the? What do you feel the, it's going to be the cost of the, um, the project, project in the right of way? The, the permit is calling out for about twenty-five thousand for the project. So, so what do we usually bond for? For uh, damages? Ten percent. Ten percent. Sounds right. That's what the permit calls for if we want to bond. <clears throat> There's no culvert or anything going in. It's just going to be a, a straight access. Mm -hmm. 
does say 10% at the top of this yeah. page. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, I mean, there's no culvert going in. I would just entertain the motion to, to take and uh, approve the project, and I wouldn't worry about the bond on that one. So what's the, uh, there's no culvert going in or anything? See, with a culvert, you always run the risk of uh, something happening to the road in there. Right. No. But just a straight uh, off the road. Are you widening the existing? I know that there's already. Yeah, the trees are coming out, and the, the road's going to. We have the map here if you want to look at it. Is it in our packet? And I do see that they determined that no culvert was required at the site, and there will be sufficient site the distance. Yeah, yeah. We'll ask your input right here. <laughs> <laughs> And you have the temporary road created to allow the farm equipment in and out? Well, that, that road's been there for mm -hmm. you know, 100 years. Okay. That's where they go. Actually, the people in the gray house um, paid for the driveway a little bit over the property line, but that mark, the marker is magnetic marker is right under the driveway. <laughs> I would understand a motion to approve the project. I make the motion to approve the permit for digging within town right away travel portion of highway um, proposed by Ellen D. Moody, and the address is 4 Long Meadow Lane, Montpelier, Vermont 05602, property Scott Hill Road, Berlin, Vermont, as presented tonight. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Good Samaritan letter update. Yeah, I spoke, spoke with uh, Mr. DeAngelis uh, midweek last week with mm -hmm. the guys that he called just regarding some concerns about, about the letter. Um, he has to go back and speak with the board uh, with regards to that, making a full committal by signing a document, so to speak. Uh, and once he has had that conversation, he'll be reaching out to get on the agenda to come speak to the board and address that letter again at that point in time. Were there any wordsmithing that they were seeking or no, not at this just time? The, just the, the content itself to them, <clears throat> asking for, you know, committal to what he said in the meeting. Right. So just to reiterate, the letter that we approved and sent was asking him to follow through with what he had said to the town in the meeting. Right. Um, and so, yeah, yes, yes, he's got to go, yeah. Yeah, so we'll expect that on the next agenda, maybe. Uh, it's probably going to be a couple of weeks. I think okay. it's going to be maybe the first meeting in December. He'll be ready to come back and talk about it. Okay. Uh, Conservation Commission update. Yep, we have, uh, that in the stuff. Yep. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening. Hey, Bill. Hi, Justin. Uh, yeah, I shouldn't take too long, but I've got a list here I'd like to go over. First of all, uh, the vast update. Uh, the work crew was in there doing the last piece of uh, excavation and trail work, and they got rained out a little bit on Friday, as we know, and Saturday. I think they finished up yesterday, but that should put us in good stead with our relationship with VAST, and the trail looks like it's going to be uh, in good shape. The signs have gone up. A lot of the signs have gone up. We've also signed the bridge, although we don't have the sign yet that VAST and the Conservation Commission have jointly decided to have a sign put on the bridge saying it's uh, the bridge was constructed with the efforts of both Bast and the town of Berlin. So that sign is still coming. We had a general talk about the gate, with Bast gating on Darling Hill above where the proposed new parking lot is. 
So it would be as you leave the parking lot, I think there's a really nice place there for the gate, plenty of room when the gates open and not so much room. So uh, wheeled vehicles can get around. Uh, obviously bikes can, but we're talking about, you know, pickup trucks, ATVs, et cetera. So I think we've got a pretty good location for the gate. Uh, we'll make a site visit with VAS to determine that, but we're kind of waiting to see what happens in November with the parking lot and if that will be done and how that how that's going. The uh, We are gonna take some of our monies and as you guys suggested uh, for admin, we're gonna have uh, Christy Flynn do our minutes in the future and she's working on our last meeting. So those should be uh, pretty tight and posted in a timely fashion. Uh, we do have new copy coming for the sign that's gonna go at the Darling Hill Trailhead. As we know, that sign that's there is outdated right. and, and painted over so that we should have copy either tomorrow or the next day and always on time signs and designs said it shouldn't be more than a week or so. So hopefully we can have a nice clean sign. I suggest we'll probably put the sign right where it is now if the parking lot isn't ready by hunting season, but I think it's great to have a sign there. And basically it's a welcome sign and it's, I think it's, you know, we we did a proof with it. We had the Recreation Commission look at it also, and I think we're all going to be happy with the new sign. Uh, let's see. The, the Mamba agreement we had signed with by Brad Watson. So we do have a signed agreement with Mamba. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? How do you, and they provided a certificate of liability, correct? We do have a certificate, but we're having uh, Rob Halpert look at the amounts. So we're waiting to, for Rob to get back to us. On now, that. now, yeah, I mean, have we set a minimum minimum amount, or is that what you're working on? That's what we're working on. I, I'll have to go back and see what we did with Vast, but I believe oh, it's a yeah. million dollars with Vast. So we should probably suggest that, right? As we're well, trying I think to, we should, we should adopt a minimum standard to follow it at, at least. I thought yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking we'd try to pull this quarter agreement in, into the same into the same uh, agreement as we have with Vast and Mumba. I think that's what our goal was to have. Okay. Yeah. Then, then by all means, and we'll set that for a standard moving forward. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, just two other things briefly. We are uh, a member of the Conservation Commission. Uh, uh, Sister Lorian has taken the lead on. Uh, this groundwater uh, concern that we have. And I think she's she's gonna be working on a document that we'll be sharing with you at some point. Our hopes is to have uh, some sort of document addressing groundwater in the entire town of Berlin, some guidelines or, or something to include in the, in the town plan, uh, whether it's not you know, put in the plan for the next round, it may be five years, but we just think uh, that the concerns about groundwater in general is, is an important thing for the town to be aware of. Okay, well, I haven't, I haven't personally heard of anything to do with the groundwater up there or any concerns. So be interested to see what those updates are. Yep, yep, we'll try to get them probably in the next month or so. We'll let you know and put it on your, We'll let Vince know and work with Vince. The last one last thing I just wanted to point out is uh, I think it would uh, benefit the town if we figure out a way or get someone to volunteer to be a tree ward. Uh, that's a position that's presently not filled and it's up to the select board to just appoint someone. It's nothing that has to be elected. And you can also have deputy tree wardens too. But I think if we get someone, it doesn't have to be a town resident. But if we can get someone to be the tree warden, I think that would benefit us, particularly with the emerald ash borer and shade trees. What? What's that? Just on that note, Phil. Sorry, this is Vince. We do have a resident uh, that's actually probably certified. I think he's into forestry. I don't know him real well, but uh, Dave Wilcox. It may be right. interesting. Yeah, if he does, that's terrific. I was just looking at the new statute, and it doesn't say you have to be a town resident. So. If we were, if we couldn't fill it with someone, you know, with some sort of background in this and we need to go outside the town, we could do that. It, you know, obviously 
you know, the, there's no, there's been no compensation that I know of for being a tree warden. So it would be up to the select board, but uh, I don't think it's a compensated position. I think it's just a volunteer position. I you know, tra traditionally it has been. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else do you have for us, Bill? I think that's it. I think that's it. I think, I think everybody, you know, if you get a chance, I mean, a lot of you guys, you know, if you're going out hunting or whatever, uh, take a walk up through, see what people think about the new bridge and the trail. Any any feedback on, on where the gate might go? I think we're all in agreement, but if there are other eyes that want to take a look at it, we are thinking about other gates at the far as the south end of the uh, Bass Trail, but primarily we want to get that gate up off Brookfield Road and Darling Trail there to start. Uh, we hope that, you know, everyone abides by you know, the vast agreement and we don't get too many renegades, you know, with new trails, et cetera, up there. We think it's well marked and I think everyone should be respecting the new vast trail, but we'll probably think about a couple gates at uh, what we call the town forest, also referred to as the Kelly lot, was it, where it dips down back towards where the log landing was uh, on Brookfield Road. Uh, that's an entrance that you might want to gate. And then the other one is gating just at the border of the Kelly Lot Town Forest and the uh, adjoining private landowner at the south end. So that's, where, that's, that's to be determined. Where are we at with the uh, marking of the, the perimeter and the, the signage for entering the Berlin Town Forest? I can, you want me to take that one, Phil, since it's on me? Yeah, I think you, you had those. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and take that. I, I've got to quote out for prices for the tags, similar to what Norfield has. I don't have a response from them yet, so I may have to go out to a couple other sign manufacturers to see what I can get. Um, I'm going to wait a few weeks uh, for the quote yeah, on that. I had a question about that. Are we okay using always on time signs and design over here across next to UPS? Well, Is that who we use? I think. Depending on the, the size of the project, we we'll actually kind of have to get a quote RFP. It depends on how big the project is. Depends on the, the size of the project, Phil. We, we, we've used them yeah, we, for other public I mean, they're certainly welcome to put a, put a price on it. Yeah, we uh, the first sign that we're working on that should be ready, it's uh, 48 by 36, that large sign. That's approximately $240, and we've already earmarked $500 for signage. So I think that's well within, you know, the, what we're, we're hoping for. And I think it'll be a very attractive sign. As I said, I'm getting a, a proof back. If I sh I'll run it by Vince. If anyone else wants to see it, fine. I can run it by. As soon as I get a proof, I can email you if you if you want to see it. But that's, that's who I was told. They seem like nice folks. Guy's name there is, I think, Daniel Kirkpatrick or something. So that's who I've been dealing with. OK. All right. Well, I appreciate the update. Okay. Anything from the board? Thank you very much, Phil. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Yep. All right. So we have a discussion for the appointment of emergency management management director and EMC coordinator. That's correct. Um, I think we have. Uh, Someone from the fire department that may be interested that's here tonight to talk about that. And Bruce Richardson is also willing to, he, he was the, um, I forget the official title, but he was not the director, but he was the coordinator in the past. Right. And he's, he is uh, more than willing to still serve in that coordinator. Bruce has role. done the coordination, and then typically it's been a. You were the. Uh, yeah, I know. Lucky. Doesn't make you sense. You inherited it by the position, I believe, but. Uh, um, so by, we have to have these filled, uh, I forget, we had some discussion on it prior where, yeah, um, there wasn't a statute, it was, uh, uh, like, yeah, there was a, re there's a certain requirements, there is a requirement for it that we have to, so what are the requirements? Uh, I'll have to pull them back up because I don't have them memorized. No, it's my under, Keith, is that why you're here, Keith? That's why I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> they want two members from the towns. One is the on the town emergency management board. Usually the, the director of that, that'd be Bruce. And then the other is 
either from the fire department, the police department, or EMS. And they're, you know, they suggest one of the department heads for that. Um, so, and I don't know if Vince who's, was able to that? talk to Chief Pomperian today. Um, what's that? Who's that? It's the, it's, there's a new name for it. What's the name for it, Vince? I'm looking it up because uh, I don't have a memory. Yep. It's basically the, the regional planning. It's, uh, hi, this is Bruce Richardson. Can you hear me? There he is. Hi, Bruce. The answer. Hello. Uh, yeah, it's the Regional Emergency Management Committee. It's uh, what the state has uh, established to replace the old local emergency planning committee. All right. What traditionally, what position have you filled, Bruce? Um, well, under the old LEPC, uh, it was all uh, volunteers and no, there was no uh, assigned positions. Uh, the, but the state um, that we we're having trouble keeping the LEPCs active and meeting. So the state has restructured things and um, have, have created this uh, regional emergency management committee with um, two people appointed from each town. Uh, and so that way they're hoping they can get uh, more uh, active participation in these regional committees uh, for doing uh, regional emergency planning on uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so anyway, in, um, in the past, it's just, like I say, been a voluntary thing with uh, then the people who participate would um, they'd vote for a chair and a vice chair um, and th those kind of things. And it was run that way. Under the new system, it's going to be, uh, the state's gonna be uh, funding a support person from the regional planning commission, and um, there'll still be people voted to be chairpersons um, and that sort of thing. But um, as far as the uh, being the uh, member from the new REMCs, uh, as it was said, there, there's two people that have to be uh, appointed by the, the towns. Um, one is the emergency management director who can then in turn designate another person to be the member to the REMC. Uh, and I had uh, raised my hand to do that uh, position as the emergency management coordinator for the town. And then the other uh, position had to be filled by somebody from the emergency res um, response community as Chief uh, Keith had noted. So um, that's pretty much where things stand. I hope that answered your question. Sort of. <laughs> what, are, what are the different roles do for the community? Do you know? Uh, right now it's, it's kind of up in the air, but I believe the plan, it's gonna be a, um, they're gonna have each uh, REMC is gonna work with their community all the member towns and come up with a regional emergency response plan. I uh, don't know what that's going to look like. It's, it's, this is something new. Uh, before this, the uh, local emergency planning committees primarily focused on hazardous materials and uh, keeping a database of all the, the uh, businesses and, and government facilities in a given town that had uh, hazardous materials. So this is a, it's gonna be kind of a new thing, but it's gonna be uh, more focused on a regional emergency response kind of um, uh, goals and focus and, and so forth. Um, so have we, Vince, have we put these positions on our website saying that we were accepting applications, anything like that? We have not yet done any of that. This is the first discussion that we've really had about it. Okay. 
um, I, can, I can certainly take an action to, to do that, get some sort of description. I'll work with Bruce. So I, I assume you have interest in the keys, right? I would be willing to fill that position. The second position has to be from the emergency services community, not just a general public member. Right. And from what I was reading that was sent out to Bruce and so on and so forth, they're really looking for the heads of departments to fill those positions. Yep. Um, so. I think what we'll do, and what we've done previously, even though I understand we don't have a lot of information out, like men's staff yeah. do a little bit of research on it. Um, what we're going to do is, like, with any of our positions we've had here, whether it's conservation commission, anything like that, we put it out. We do have a deadline for this, Vince. That I know of. I think there is one. Bruce can probably tell us. I believe we're already. Bruce, you know the deadline for this. The the state had asked for the people to be appointed by one November yeah, today. So my apologies for not having this before you sooner. That's on me. That's okay. Um, my guess is there's a little bit of leniency in that, being it's a new system or new 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 setup, right? What we've done in the past is, when possible, <coughs> advertise the position or an opening to see who had interest in it. We set right. that, we set that standard with the conservation commission. We set that with our other board, with our other committees, most recently. Um, and though, well, I know both you and Keith are probably well qualified for the position. Um, I feel like we need to advertise that based on everything we've done prior. Bruce, um, do you know if there's a uh, any kind of a, a minimum standard for experience in this? Uh, I don't recall there being anything in the state guidance that was sent out. Um, the so I, I don't, I'm not aware of there being any. I think it, um, the intent is that by virtue of having the town emergency management director be one of the persons um, or somebody he designates uh, would, would have the similar kind of um, experience and qualifications. And as far as the emergency services representative, uh, just says it has to be um, from in that area, fire, uh, yeah. police, or uh, emergency <laughs> medical services. And when they say it's going to be a regional committee, uh, what's the region? Is it like county, or is it a smaller group? It, uh, it, it can vary. Um, my understanding is it'll it'll be the same boundaries as what was formerly uh, LEPC five, okay. which was Washington County plus a small portion of Orange County. Um, so it, it's, it, in our case, it's roughly by a county, but some areas are um, like up in the Northeast Kingdom, they have a, a bigger area. Um, so it's not just by, by county. There was a map in the package that was sent uh, I don't know if the select board got it, but uh, Vince should have a copy of it yeah, I didn't that shows that. Uh, a map of the how they were going to um, lay it out. I'll send that out after. Vince said he'll send that out after for us. Excellent. Anything else, Bruce, for an update for us? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to participate virtually for health reasons. So, I, I, so thank you for that. We appreciate your time and everything you've done for us. Absolutely. And all the effort you put in. So, thank you. Um, no, you're very welcome. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. So it sounds like we should get this posted to the website of the accept uh, cover letter. You know, letter. What do we? Letter of interest. Letter of. Seek interest in volunteers. Mm -hmm. I'll get, yeah. uh, get some description, some details on it, and I'll, uh, I'll put up the uh, information. And then as long as I think if we have it up there for a week or so, we should probably have enough and you can send a letter. Also, I'm trying to contact whoever I can find a contact within the state and tell them we probably won't have it until the next select board meeting. Right. On the 15th. 
so I'll work between now and then to so so it's hard, hard, it's hard to make a decision without having yep. not even knowing what we're looking you know exactly what we need to fill for a position and what and this first time we've talked about a housing board I mean, how do you feel about that well if you're going to appoint I mean if you're going to take and uh, uh, post it um, the, apparently there's no minimum qualifications so anybody could be it but uh, hopefully the the, as I understand, we're only going to be appointing one person in the in the what is it the management director, and he's going to appoint the appoint the coordinator. I think uh, well, actually, we're going to, uh, I think we appoint two point, positions. Point, point but they, the the from my yeah, see that's why I want to get some more information <laughs> yeah. before we do this. Yeah, I think we appoint um, them both. But I think the emergency <laughs> management director can appoint a representative okay and we have to appoint a coordinator as well I think okay. there's two that we need to do because traditionally what we've done is like Bruce was the management director I guess yeah last year technically I was the coordinator which I did a terrible terrible job at because um, I really didn't know um, but so that's why I'd like to get some more information and figure out exactly how we're going to fill these roles for the town well, then probably have it posted and taken, just send out the information in an email. Yeah. Yep. We'll get it on, we'll get it on the website as well. Anything you want to add, Keith? No, I would just look at the state's guidance to see what they're looking for for personnel because they, they seem to have, even though they don't say there's minimum qualifications, by, by the fact of who they're basically suggesting gets appointed to it, there, there's basically qualifications and that's that's requirements there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what Vince will do. One would presume. That. Yep. Okay. I will. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. you. I might call you and, uh, and Bruce as I'm looking into this as well. So. Absolutely. All right. Um, next policy for acceptance of roads, highways. Yes. My select board for review and discussion. Yes. So this came about when we started talking about taking back, taking over the uh, ownership of Dodge Farm Road. I was asked by the board to do a little bit of research and see what we did on, on previous roads and things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say I used, kind of used Partridge Farm as the baseline. Um, that was done from new construction up though, right from the beginning. Um, so I looked at a couple other roads. Tim gave me some information as well. Uh, and what I did was try to make a hybrid policy that covers both. So if a contractor comes into town or an owner comes into town and wants to build a new subdivision in a road, we can give them this to look at what's going to be done if they ever think that they want the town to take the road over. If someone comes in that already has a private road that they want the town to take over, we can give them the same document and they can pull out what they need to meet for requirements as well. Um, and, and again, there'll be a caveat at the end of this draft as well that the select board always has the right to make exceptions to the rule as well. So if there are exceptions that need to be made and the town is willing to do so, it, it can be done in line with this policy as well. But it gives a good baseline. It covers a lot of things. Um, so I'm sure you're not going to want to read through it all tonight and make a decision. Um, but again, it's there to, to review and look at uh, as a baseline. I think for a lot of it, we we'll probably have to turn to Tim or, yeah, or you and review yeah. and see where it falls within the standards. Have you got an opportunity to review this? I think pretty good. Not like word for word, but yeah, we've gone through it and it it covers a lot of stuff. And I think it's it's definitely a very good start. Yeah, and it does where it we does need to be and require it to meet. It kind of keeps town standards and state standards for roads. Right, what that requires as well. The nice thing about it is, is it keeps everybody equal. Correct. Right. Well, we need to have some sort of, I, I think we need to have a policy in place yeah. for anything like this. I'm surprised the one. <coughs> so, well, well, in the past, we always follow the state guidelines. Yeah. So. And, and that, this actually says, you know, it basically follows the state guidelines, but there's some other things in there that I pulled out as well. Yeah. And right. I think the last road we accepted was up on Vine Street off Vine Street and we did have them do bore samples because yep. Yep. we weren't sure of the road. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, they've done bore samples Berlin as well Heights. on Dodge Farm that we had. 
So just, I'm just going to throw this out there. I was talking with Tim earlier as well. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to throw out there that we might want to do or consider is for Tim and I to take this and go up to Dodge Farm Road, um, look at how it meets, what it meets, if it meets, um, or if there are any exceptions um, before you make the final decision. And then you can look at this compared to, to our findings as well to say, yeah, that's fine. Those exceptions are fine. Or, hey, everything's great. Um, there, you know, there's nothing left to do, so kind of use that as the test platform for this as well. Maybe we need to change this. You may want to make recommendations to change this based on your findings as well. So I just want to throw that out there as something to think about as well. Okay. Um, we've done samples. We've done, I mean, I think we've, it's important to have a, a policy like this in place for, for future development, you know, for exactly everything in the development. I mean, if, I look, at, I look at the Dodge Farm and I say, okay, well, from a municipal standpoint, they're building, I don't know how many more houses up there with how much tax revenue that generates for the town, you, you know, if the road's up to standards, and I think it's kind of important that we, or not kind of, it's definitely important mm -hmm. that way. There should be a policy. There should I'm be sorry, a policy guys. in place so that whatever developer goes into place or goes in to, to do the property understands the guidelines, understands what it'll take, um, because I'm sure that having your house on either a paved road or a dirt road or dirt side road, it makes a difference with values, maintenance, road, everything. So um, how does the board feel we should proceed with this acceptance and reclassification? Reclassification? Do you want to go up, take a look, have you review it, go from there? Seems reasonable. It does seem reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to drag on, drag out the process on as we're going into winter too. I'm sure that's a, a concern. Um, I, yeah, I, I want to make sure that when we do it, we do it the right way and we we make sure we set a standard that we can use for the future. Um, and thank you for bringing it to the board because otherwise maybe we wouldn't be working on this maybe right now. So. Yeah. Do you have any questions or concerns or anything you wanted to add to that at all? No, I'm listening in and I might, might stay for the Economic Development Committee part. <laughs> oh, that would be excellent. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah. I was. You were on it according yeah, that would to be the, wonderful. the flow chart that we had, so appreciate it. And that will give us time to review all of this as sure. well. Sure. Yeah. So, are you, that was a great time. Uh, yeah. That's a question. Are you available Thursday morning? Because Tim and I were talking about doing that walkthrough Thursday morning this week to keep um, this moving. If you'd like to join us, you don't have to, but it's I just throw it out there. On um, what time? I have a. Six, it'll probably be around nine thirty. Oh, that'd be perfect. Between nine or nine thirty. Wonderful. That will come up. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's great. Do you Thank you. Do you want us to come up to the house? And let you know that we're there. Do you we want can to call you the bottom. We could just meet there at 9:30. Okay. Right at the, um, I'll give you a call before we leave here. Just. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll just meet up there. Thank okay. you, Roberta. Thanks. Thank you both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. See you guys later. Have a good evening. Thanks, yeah, Tim. Well. Appreciate your input. Thanks, Tim. See you. Have a good evening. You too. Super duper. How many cob stoppers do you have? Not enough. <laughs> okay. All right. ARPA fund usage discussion. I was asked to keep that on the agenda. Um, yeah. There's really nothing new to talk about at this point. Yep. Uh, I don't want to speak for Diane, but she has an account set up. Uh, we've got the first two deposits in the account earning interest. Yeah, and, well, not uh, much right now, but. Right. Um, yeah, what we received from the municipal portion was 145,568.32. County was 270,088.34 for a total of 415,656.66. And that should double, right? I believe mm -hmm. that because it that's we got one payment, the second payment is supposed to be the same. Yep. Yeah. We'll get so that's what we received so far. And what is our date we have to spend this by again? I thought it was 2025. The, well, the, the, we have. I understood it correctly. I'll look at it again to make sure, but I think we have. It has to be committed, the first round of funds, so the, the money that she has now, has to be committed. It doesn't have to be spent, but it has to be committed within two years. So committed. this is 2021, so 2023, that those funds have to be committed to a project. Okay. And then the second round by 2025. To the state? To the state? We have is to commit to have? the state. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. What that money's going to go for on those on what projects? We got. Yep. We got a little bit of time still. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The list can change. We can add or delete. Well, we're still. Yeah, we're working on it. Anything else for that? For no. Use that discussion no. from the board. Okay. So. We have a second review of policy for acceptance or reclassification of town highways. On the agenda, we're going to substitute in a letter of intent to participate in the road grant. Tim, Tim just left. He didn't hear my comment. So we have an opportunity uh, for the grants and aid program purchase um, to get an award of up to $6,000 for a hydro seeder this year if we want to purchase that um, with a 20% cost on the town side, so about $1,500 uh, that, that we can put in for it, and that's the reason for this. Do, do, we, want to, do we want to do that? Tim, uh, again, I don't want to speak too much, but he said the uh, hydro cedar obviously would be a little more efficient for him and, uh, when he's ditching and doing culverts and things or, or you know, the side of the road work if he needs seating, any of those things. He can, one man can basically go out pretty much and walk with a traffic guy and and do that. Uh, maximum of six thousand dollars. Yep. And that requires a match. Yeah, there's a twenty percent match for, this, for the seat. So we get an eighty percent paid for. It. Basically, it's a grant for eighty percent of it. Um, again, Cash. this isn't a, a decision. Doesn't have to be made tonight. Great if you do, um, but it's not due until it has to be by November nineteenth. Does he have it in the budget? Money in the budget? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I have to refer to Diane which, on that one. I, but which category would that go under? Um, tools. Tools and equipment. Tools and equipment. Tools and equipment. And so we're talking like twelve hundred dollars. Fifteen. So no more than no more than fifteen hundred. Yeah. I, I think. I, I do it, feel but. strongly too. Yeah, I think if he has it in the budget, that's mm -hmm. something that's going to save potentially on labor, and it's in the budget. I mean, what is? Any other follow up on I'll, it? I'll verify it just for sure, but I'm pretty certain. So we'll put it <coughs> next agenda. Mm -hmm. We'll get the confirmation. Yeah. And then we have tax tax forgiveness on amounts under five dollars. Okay. I've got twenty eight of them because I haven't done it this year at all, and all the all twenty eight equal twenty nine dollars and twenty eight cents. So if you want to look at them or not, but. I haven't done them for a while. A lot of them are just transpositions, or maybe they paid, um, like, say they owed $25.05, they paid $25. Like a lot of those. Total of $29. $29 for 28 of them. Yeah, I'm entertaining motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Diane. Thanks. The motion carries. Parking lot agreement with the city of Montpelier. Yep, that's in your package. I'd just like you to take a read of it. Mm -hmm. The only thing I found interesting in there, to be honest, is that they, they want a whole dollar for us. The city shall, for one dollar, mm -hmm. grant the town the right to construct a parking lot, blah, blah, blah. blah. And maybe that's standard lawyer language, I don't know. But, uh, it's just a one, one pager. Agreement. It's in your package. I know. I'm looking. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. So I'll be on that one. Should, should be. <laughs> Did I staple it to the? Did I know? Well, here it is then. Oh, sorry. Move back here. Nope. I. Okay. Maybe I. Um, again. 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 For real. We can pass yeah. it around. You got the letter of intent, though, right? It should have been right behind that. I just saw the letter of intent. There's the a letter of intent. Nothing behind it? No. It's on one of those weeks, hasn't it? It should be in the way back. Right after, huh. right after that. No, oh, I believe you. I didn't, I didn't hide it on here. Here it takes Well, there's mine. It was in my package. Right. <laughs> Rob's looked at this. Is our Rob looked at our attorney's reply? Our attorney wrote it. And Montpelier agreed to it? Yeah, uh, it's in Montpelier's town manager's hands right now. Okay, so it says this agreement made and entered into whatever day of November 2021 by the, in between the town of Berlin and Vermont Municipal Corporation, uh, a Vermont Municipal Corporation located in Washington, Vermont, 
City of Montpelier of Vermont Municipal Corporation located in Montpelier, Vermont. Where is the town seeks to construct and maintain a 100 by 100 foot parking area on a portion of city owned property within the town located to the west of Brookfield Road and north of Darling Road. Uh, whereas the parking area will be adjacent to Darling Road and available for use by the public. And whereas the city seeks to provide consent to the town to construct and maintain a parking area and to allow use of the area by parking by the public. and Whereas the city seeks to indemnify, be indemnified by the town for any claims or suits made against the city arising out of the described use of the parking area herein, including but not limited to claims, suit for property damage, personal injury, and other claims, damages, or losses that may arise from construction, maintenance, or uses of the parking area. Wherefore, the parties agree as follows. The city shall, for one dollar and other good consideration, grant the town the right to construct and maintain the parking area and to allow parking by the public in the parking area in perpetuity. Uh, the town shall indemnify, defend, and hold harmless the city and the city's officers, employees, and agents from all claims or suits for property damage, personal injuries, losses, claims, suits, demands for payments, demands of any kind, and judgments arising from construction, maintenance, or use of the parking area up to the limit of insurance coverage applicable to such claims and suits. I'm not an attorney, but it sounds pretty standard. <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty fair. <clears throat> I think that would help with a lot of issues on Brookfield Road. Um, so we need to authorize me to sign it, I guess, or authorize the board to sign it if you guys care to. Do we have a dollar? <laughs> Is that in the budget? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what category? <laughs> Recreation committee. We get a reserve. We'll take it right out of reserve. <laughs> I'll pull it out of reserves. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Good question, Brad. <laughs> Move to have the chair sign the agreement with the town, uh, city of Montpelier. I second it. Any discussion? For the cost of a dollar. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Parking lot in. All right. Now are we on RFP for legal services decision? Now those have to be the package. Oh. Let me so put both of them in there. There. Uh, I was asked at the last meeting to uh, skip over the check on the references for uh, Monahan, Safar, and Lucham. I contacted the three references. Yes. Oh. You skipped over. I did. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. We'll go back to that. If I, right. I did skip okay. over the economic. Did you skip it? I'm oh, sorry. I did. I knew I did. <laughs> no, okay. 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 Stop. We'll go back. Yeah, we'll go back. Okay. So I'm keep a bit away. Um, all right. Well, let's have a discussion to reestablish uh, the responsibilities uh, for Economic Development Committee. Um, start talking, then I guess. I can tell you who's, who was, again, this was brought up in the meeting that we had at the Comfort Inn. I was asked to put this on the agenda for discussion. The Economic Development Council, as it's called here, that we had in the past, was made up of uh, Mr. Turing Nelson, Ms. Roberta Haskins, Jeremy Hansen, Jamie Stewart, and it did have one vacancy, so it was a five-person uh, council. They were actually, again, I don't know the history, uh, but I do understand that they've been inactive for quite some time, but their terms were good according to, to what we found until this year. So they just, just expired. Um, so it's, it's something that, uh, again, we'll be talking some more about it at the next meeting at the Comfort Inn on Tuesday. Uh, when was the last time you think you met? Actually, it wasn't that long ago because I think one of the, was the tax obligations of this committee was to um, review the tax state Applications. The senior housing. Yeah, so it was for the Ducevich project. Well, that was, so that was 
Cartoon was that? 2019. Yeah. A couple, a couple of years ago, almost. So. And then it started back when Pat McDonald was on the board, I think. And the idea was to try and bring more business into Berlin. Not that there isn't a lot, but. Yeah, at one time they also went through the options tax that yeah. Jeremy Hansen had really. Yeah, when Jeremy was yeah. active with the options tax. So it wasn't a regular meeting committee council, but we were called together periodically for, for different reasons. Well, I think we're looking at potentially, you know, I think some of us have questioned whether or not our tax stabilization policies exactly what the town needs or wants at this point in time. The local options tax has come up recently as another mm -hmm. discussion item and uh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't personally know much about obviously I was on the board just about the time you guys had, had your last big event or whatever in the town uh, but I think it, it could be a, a valuable resource for the community and the town and Actually, I think both of those topics probably do need to be revisited. They're pretty, I wouldn't say controversial, but there's, there's a lot of talk on either side of, of both of those topics, a lot of pros and cons, and it's probably worth getting two people together, establishing the committee just to review them and revisit them. Yeah. There's a lot going on. <coughs> Pretty busy. What are you? Uh, what are your thoughts, Brad? Well, I was just thinking that I, it, it has come to be the point to um, we need to revisit the, the local options tax. But I think at the same time we need uh, some people to go out and uh, uh, explain it. You know the be the benefits of it. And uh, for that, I do think the the Economic Development Committee should be able to do that. But then the other one, of course, is whether or not we still need to have a, a, a tax stabilization. Because Montpelier's built out, Barry's built out, we're pretty much it. Tour, is this, this why you're on the phone with us tonight? We can't, we can't hear, hear you. you. Sorry. Um, right. So typically, I mean, are we advertising to, I mean, the board's never Everybody's appointment just expired, basically. 2021, so it would have been probably around March or April, typically. Um, my thought is I can reach out. I can try to reach I out each, we, each of those members. And also Plus there's a vacant solicit, one. solicit interest like we have with every other board. Yep. Every mm -hmm. other volunteer I'll, I'll, I'll position. Post, I'll post all five, basically, mm -hmm. as vacant positions. Yeah. Uh, but I'll reach out to the four that have been in it to let them know mm -hmm. um, and see if there's any interest there as well. That's excellent. I think that's, and then, then we can put that on the agenda for uh, um, maybe a month from now. Uh, so if we, you know, take you a week or so to get it out there and do that, and then kind of give two or three weeks for people to put it on the first meeting in December. Yeah, I think oh. it's not that far away. It's only two meetings away. I know, right? Holy cow. I know, it's pretty scary. Does that seem like the right time frame, or should we push it out a little Yeah, you, well. You need to get it done because we're going to start budgeting. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, we're right. already starting to work on that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Roberta, do you remember if the uh, if the appointments to that committee, were they staggered? Yeah. That, on, the, on the document, again, that I have, they all expired at the same time. I don't think they were staggered, so it's something that we need to consider. I would think so. Yes, yes. I think it would be wise to consider a staggering. Yeah. 
staggering approach. Anything else? That's a good point. No? Most of them. Okay. Same. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Roberta. Enjoy your evening. We'll see you Thursday. We'll see you Thursday, yes. Appreciate it. All right. Our fee legal services decision. So I was asked to, we talked about it in the last meeting. I was asked to uh, check the references that were provided. I, I've done that. I contacted all three. I got a response from, from two. Mm -hmm. The other one never never got back to me. Uh, so they the reference, you know, the responses were, uh, you know, they, they felt fortunate to have them. They find a way to get things done without a lot of drama. They've had it for four years. They're very professional, but they're also very busy. Um, Meaning, they can be slow to respond, but once they do, they you know they get things done. Um, that's because I asked them, what do, you, "What do you mean they're very busy? How does that impact you?" Type of thing. Um, uh, the other uh, response was that they had worked with uh, all three that they were recommending, and they all did a good job. Um, he also said they're they're busy, and they uh, do need some reminders occasionally, from his perspective, to. Uh, to follow up to get what, what they're looking for um, and they they're good at providing general guidance uh, you know over the phone or via email as well as needed that was for Monaghan Safari and Duchenne All right so to be fair we didn't do reference checks with our current with we, we did Zollinger. not do reference checks with so our current what's your experience with Zollinger Cameron well I have, I have to be honest um, you know since uh, Rob has kind of stepped aside uh, the we have two people that are working with us now. Uh, they've been very responsive. Um, an example is the agreement that you saw tonight. You know, I cont contacted them just a couple of weeks ago because uh, Rob had told me that he had just turned it over to them. So we've got it tonight uh, for tonight's meeting. So they've been very good. And that, as far as that goes, um, the other benefit that we have with them, you know, they, they know the history they, that come that organization has been, I believe, with the, with the town for almost, well, since 1989, I believe it was. And we've been mm -hmm. working with Rob Halpert and this company, was the date that I saw. Oh, 92, excuse me, I got it right here. Right here. I yeah. 1992. So they, they've got a lot of history with the town, and Rob is still available to them um, if we need to go back and, and get some details, uh, you know, so there, there's a little bit of cost associated with that. The big difference is, you know the dollars and cents as well. Right? That's How many hours did they bill us for last year? Uh, I have to look. I don't know. Which carries because it's about. I mean, it's a twenty. What do we got? We got Monahan at one hundred and ninety-five an hour, and Zollinger at two twenty. Two twenty. Yeah, yeah they're, they're twenty-five an raising, hour. They're raising their rates. They were at two hundred. They're just raising them this year with us. My thought is to, and I haven't tried to negotiate with them at all to see if they'd be willing to compromise on the rates. That's I'm asking for a best and final offer on their rate. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking, honestly. You know, um, I, I definitely would. If they, if they would come down, yeah. my, personally, my recommendation is is to stay with them at this point. That we know them. Um, we've got two instead of one now working with us. Um, we're getting good responses, and they know us. I mean, they they can provide us information fairly quickly. These others are. I, I suspect they're very good based on their references as well. They're in Burlington. Uh, I don't have a response on any travel costs or anything like that as well. You know, if we invite them to meetings, um, whether there is none, maybe, but I don't know the answer to that yet either. I haven't got any, any information back on that. So we can we can probably push it out another week if you want me to do some talking first. I don't know. We, we have been kicking this down the road a little bit. Well, I would try to get the travel costs. Also, ask for the best and final from both of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the best and final from both of them is a wise choice. And um, under Monaghan, Safar, and Descharm, they do say in their other costs on rare occasions when necessary, right. we charge actual costs for out of pocket expenses incurred on our client's behalf. But they do preface it with on rare occasions. Yeah. So, but in all fairness to what, them, what does we, that mean? Right. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, Have I'm that clearly with that, defined. Honestly, that statement, and that's mm -hmm. why I want some clarity mm -hmm. from them personally. And that makes sense. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Travel, meals, mm -hmm. lodging, 
And any clarity from either one in best final offer, I think, is a wise, wise I, I will go back to both route to take. Ask, ask Thank you. Well. Discussion of hiring of public works staff person. Okay. No. I think because because you asked me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I did an overview of what I do for work, so it's just you know this is not absolutely everything that I do, but what I am. Thank you. Also, what I'm, um, when you're looking at this, the first part was when I was first hired, these are the things I did. Then when Dana came on board and I was more comfortable, more efficient, he added some things. Those two things were 40 hours a week. Then after Dana left, I did step up and try to help Tom because obviously he was just really overwhelmed. Uh, but what's happening now is I'm still getting more and more work added to me and I, I can't do it all. Did, did Tom take any of the work back once no. he took back his regular duties? No, he's given me more. And, and one of the things that, um, well, we, we'll, we'll probably talk about it in um, executive session, but some of the, I, I asked Diane to do this um, because I, I realized that we had uh, a public works assistant. We that, did originally. Originally, that, that, that then resigned, whatever, was never replaced, so I wondered where. Yeah. Well, that's when Tom took over. Or he came into the picture, and then they, because they wanted him to do different things that the person could, wasn't doing. My sole responsibility at that, at that point was just supposed to be uh, entering the meter readings and doing the bills. That's never been the case. I've always done uh, a lot more. I've added uh, allocations, keeping track of allocations. Uh, it's just there's a lot more to it. I've actually kind of explained it in here. Um, but it's in this, they've changed the way they do the billing, and that was a huge amount of work, and it still is because they're, they're they just they keep it keeps revol it keeps getting bigger, and they are getting more allocations, they are getting more people on board, so they're just more and more and more work all the time, mm -hmm. and I'm not losing any of it. It is. Do you do any positive reporting? Meaning, do you keep track of how many hours you spend on the enterprise fund? Because mm -hmm. that's all I have. I have. Okay. I have. Yeah, when I do a billing, uh, it's, it's, of course, it's, in, it's not all at one time. I usually do you know, a couple different times. But it's about, about 35 to 40 hours every quarter anyways. And that's not the time that I spend on the allocations, like this person just bought a new allocation, and you could keep track of this, and you could do all the paperwork for it. Um, but when I do the billing from beginning to end, and get it out in the mail because that does take time. I got like 450 bills. Um, it's about 40 hours. Right, and that's that's that part of your that, that part of your pay is paid for through the enterprise fund. Oh. That that's what I was asking. So no, none of my pay right. goes to the enterprise fund. Right. At the very least, I'm not dismissing like the extra work, but at the very least, those hours should be captured and paid for by the by the rate payers for that's the services. why um, I start I was keeping track of it because Dana and I yeah. Dana said he was going to do something and then of course things happen he's not here but I think there's, that was the there's two things at play there, right there are I'm just trying to fully need, understand yeah, yeah oh, absolutely we need to we the, need to make sure that the, the enterprise fund is being right. built accordingly the, the second piece was I, I have to assume at this point Tom offloaded stuff because he was trying to do the town manager's role and his Role at the same time and was trying to get you know or or asked Diane to help because of that. Um, but those things that were on his plate before should really go back to his plate. I think I, they should go back to yeah. They should go back somewhere, right? I yeah. mean, definitely off. I mean, I think was were in your experience, Diane, were these were these things that happened primarily in the absence of our previous administrator, or did some of this happen prior? Um, not prior, no. Okay. Not prior. It was after, and obviously I stepped up to the plate and said, hey, I'm yeah, going to help agree. you. We're going to mm -hmm. get these things done. Yeah. Um, but I just feel right now that the vision, uh, it's, the lines are blurred right now for him. And so Vince tells me to do something, and he tells me to do the same thing, basically. And I've gone to Vince several times about it. I, I think that needs to come to an end because right. it's just more work for me, and I have, you know, their large workload as it is. Yep, absolutely. So I think that's some of the, we'll have some discussion. We're going to have a potential, we'll have an executive session around personnel tonight anyway. Um, 
and so we can talk about. Well, also I want to give you another piece of paper that has to do with the grants I have, okay? Yep. These are the grants that I've got going on right now. So, so I'm curious, maybe when you're handing those out, what, I, I just don't know off the top of my head, what portion of Tom's salary is paid for by the Enterprise Fund? Um, okay, hmm, portion. I kind of gave that stuff to you. I'd have to get that out. That's actually part of what we're going to talk about. Yeah, okay, that's, do you, so you have all the things I gave you on that? Because I, I did give that to them. Okay, I just don't have it off the top okay, of my I head. I think that okay. doesn't show my yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. Well, just ask your question again, just so I'm clear, though. I want to make sure. So in our town budget, right, or when we budget for something, especially if, uh, a split role mm -hmm. where someone's doing half an enterprise fund type of role that's supposed to be completely separate, it's, it's right? It's interesting. And then mm -hmm. a town role right we need to make sure that we're positive reporting or billing so that enterprise function is kept whole and not not blurred it's clear that ratepayers are paying for ratepayer stuff and the town isn't picking up right. the ratepayer stuff or vice versa right so we're, we're going to cover that for sure we have okay. information on that that we'll cover in the executive session mm -hmm. um, but on the grants all i wanted to say is that normally in a year i have four to six grants uh, most of them are police. Right now, I've got 15 grants going, and then I'll probably get up to 22 or maybe yeah. even 25. That's overwhelming okay. because each one of them wants something very, very different. And I'm not an engineer, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's, very, it's been very difficult to try to put these things together because they want me to categorize them. And I might say they, right. it's the companies that we're trying to get reimbursement from. So I guess that's part of it. I mean this in a very loving way. Mm -hmm. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I want them to hire somebody part time okay. to get that part. Okay. Yeah. I, I want I do not want the sewer and water role in my job right now. Okay. Uh, the grants I have to do a portion of it because that's my job. Yeah. But um, I am gonna need more help with the grants because well, she, she wants me to slow down just a little bit on the grants coming in as well. So, uh, so, I, so I, I you got that message from her so you every do, times. everyone does in every government <laughs> organization right now. So you want you want the water and sewer off your plate, right? You I mean, I have to the do grants. the overall uh, accounting for it, which is fine, but right. I would really don't want to do be doing the sewer readings and the billing, the day to day stuff, the billing and and, and the people calling me, yeah. asking me questions, and then I also have to set up uh, meter readings if they're selling your house. I sell I set up all of that. Then I have to do uh, manual bills. I do a lot of manual billing for them. And you're doing. Everything. And I'm still doing accounting and waiting on everybody. Right. I have a lot of people that come in every day. Yeah. yeah. You sound especially right now. Especially during I mean, the obviously, the, the, the two weeks before um, you know taxes are due, people will start really streaming in. But in the summertime, that first payment in August, that is just overwhelming, because a lot of people pay for the entire year. Mm -hmm. well, and there's a lot of questions usually too. Thank you. Yeah. I've had my share. Yeah. We're lucky to have you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, anything else, Diane? I know. Okay. I guess if you look at what I've highlighted on um, on the sheet that I gave you for what I do, it's just there's not a whole lot of separation of duty in that, and I, I need to have more separation of duty. So when I'm looking at uh, code all the vendor invoices, because that's what I'm doing right now, I'm helping you know Vince and uh, Chief, but I'm also doing the warrants. I'm also signing the checks. I'm also sending that out. So, I mean, we do have to get to a point where and Vince and I have talked about it, that they need to start coding their own. And actually that was brought up during the time of the audit. Yeah. And also on the grants, right now, Vince and Tom go after the grants, but then all the paperwork goes to me and I'm the one trying to get the money back. Uh, and there's just not enough separation of doing that PC. Either. Okay. Thank you for bringing this thank to you. our attention. I'm glad you did. I thank appreciate you. it. Well, thank you. We'll talk about we'll this All right. Approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22-08 for payroll from October 10, 2021 to October 23, 2021, paid on October 27, 2021, in the amount of $45,000. $928.56. Payroll, 
payable warrant 22 G07 with checks 21535 to 21565 in the amount of $64,000. $318.09. Also, the October 2021 reconciled bank statements for the general fund and sewer water divisions and the October general journal entry. Second. Any discussion? Second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Oh, the payroll, the uh, yellow. Folder. Yellow. Aye. 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 Nope, motion carries. <laughs> Didn't hear you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Diane's too busy doing something. I know. Uh, doing somebody else's work here. Okay, this is what we're talking about. The cars the pay getting divvied up for time. All right, so once again, May 27th. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the the agenda. Stricken yeah. from the agenda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rest of it. John and I are absent. So we get the one where it's full of rad and here. No, no, May 27th. I'm pretty sure you two are here. 99 percent of the time. All right, round table, Vince. Uh, just one thing to real quick to update you on this right here. Um, had a conversation with the uh, Central Mont Medical Center, the hospital today. They are bringing back, now that COVID is somewhat over, uh, their psychiatric project, ward project. So they are looking at, I don't have copies of all this, I have one copy. Uh, what they're looking at for the project is, the, uh, I think it's a three-story addition here mm -hmm. over this parking lot. They're going to raise that building, turn it into parking, and they're also talking about this area over here Weird. turning into parking as well. So, um, again, they'll, when they have more information, they'll let us know, and they're going to uh, let me know when they want to get on the agenda and come speak to the board. So I've got to that. Part of the, I mean, we, we really don't talk about it much, but part of the economic development committee would be projects like that, too, where how's that going to impact our public, say, our public services and our safety? Right. So I would, let's make sure that the... We, we did talk a little bit about from the uh, the water use right perspective right what's what's that going to look like for you know both hooking up to, to both ends the water coming in and the water going out type right. of thing as well so th there is some conversation That's starting with there and with the permit I mean I know that we have to follow what we have set in place but we'd like to have discussions around you know any additional equipment that's going to be needed or services yep. as a result of any of that. Yep, that'll all tie in. Again, they need to, they, they were kind enough to contact us to say, hey, we'd like to just let you know what, where we're at with this, you know, kind of resurrecting this. And then mm -hmm. as they get closer and a little more information, um, we, we recommended that they come speak to the board as well. So that when they get there, they'll let us know, we'll get them on the agenda, and they can come face to face. Excellent. I'd appreciate that. Uh, anything else? No. What? <laughs> well, Brad? Um, I would entertain a motion to enter executive session for personnel. Personnel. So more. Second. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 We're in executive session. 